Good evening, I'm Paul Fraser and this is the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Safriya Palace yesterday Egypt's Foreign Minister Sama Shukri, who is currently on a regional tour. The Egyptian Foreign Minister delivered a message to His Majesty the King from President Abdel Fattah Al Sisi on the strong brotherly relations linking the two countries, in addition to the latest regional and international developments and issues of mutual concern. Shukri extended the greetings of President Al Sisi to His Majesty the King, wishing the people of Bahrain further development and prosperity. His Majesty the King also extended his greetings to President Al Sisi, wishing the people of Egypt further development. During the meeting, His Majesty the King asserted the deep rooted relations linking Bahrain and Egypt, expressing pride in the advanced level of bilateral cooperation under both countries' leaderships, keenness on enhancing joint coordination for the best interests of the two countries and their peoples. His Majesty the King noted the importance of exchanging visits for consultations at all levels, especially regarding the need for all concerted efforts to combat the current challenges facing the region. His Majesty the King expressed his appreciation for Egypt's stances under the leadership of President al-Sisi that support Bahrain as well as its vital role in defending Arab nations' causes and interests in addition to maintaining Arab national security. Shukri expressed Egypt's pride in the brotherly relations that link it with Bahrain, lauding the sincere stances of the kingdom and its honourable role in supporting joint Arab action. Upon his arrival yesterday, Egypt's Foreign Minister Sama Shukri was received by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. Present was Egypt's Ambassador to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Suha Ibrahim Al Far. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Gudabiyah Palace today His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, where they reviewed local, regional and international developments. During the meeting, the Royal Highnesses affirmed that the region's security and stability and economy are targeted, which requires strict security procedures in order to face terrorism in all its forms. The Royal Highnesses discussed the latest regional developments and the efforts exerted to enhance cooperation in facing terrorism and interference in internal Arab affairs with the aim of destabilizing security and stability.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Gudabia Palace today. In the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa. The cabinet strongly denounced the oil pipeline fire near Bari village and the damage it inflicted on economic interests and the property of individuals and establishments and endangered the safety of citizens. The cabinet described the terrorist attack as a violent and criminal act that targets vital facilities and the safety of citizens that revealed the role of the Iranian regime responsible for many acts of sabotage that affect the security and stability in Bahrain and the region which has been escalating through the Iranian-backed Houthi militia's launch of a ballistic missile in Yemen towards Riyadh and the bombing of an oil pipeline in Bahrain. The cabinet stressed that any person found to be involved with these terrorist elements in this disgraceful crime will be apprehended and that the government would spare no effort to maintain the security and the safety of the kingdom. The cabinet were briefed by the Minister of Interior on the procedures taken by the concerned bodies to handle the terrorist act, hailing their efforts and the cooperation of citizens and residents. The cabinet expressed thanks and appreciation to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, for their immediate cooperation in dealing with the incident and the resumption of oil supplies between the two countries in record time. The Cabinet also thanked all countries and regional and international organisations for their support of Bahrain's procedures taken to maintain its safety and its security. His Royal Highness the Premier directed to expropriate a number of properties in various areas to be included in a number of projects for public benefit, including Samabad housing project and the expansion of some roads in Aldir and Jidhafs. The Cabinet approved the expropriation of the Pearl Museum in Muharraq. In line with the government's plan to reduce expenditure, the Cabinet decided to cancel the expatriate allowance paid to non-Bahraini employees on foreign contracts. It directed the Civil Service Bureau, in cooperation with relevant government agencies, to settle the status of existing foreign employees through comprehensive contracts guaranteeing their entitlements. The Cabinet approved a draft agreement on the avoidance of double taxation and prevention of fiscal evasion for income taxes between the Government of Bahrain and the Government of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region of the People's Republic of China to provide a suitable legal, legislative and economic environment that would encourage the flow of capital and joint investments. The Cabinet delegated the Minister of Finance to sign the agreement. The Cabinet reviewed a number of proposals including a multi-storey car park in a number of hospitals, organising working hours for doctors in dental clinics and health centres, as well as radiology services, facilitating entrances to Janabia, establishing family hotel apartments in various areas, as well as a proposal concerning the Sports Association for the Disabled. The Government's decisions on the proposals were referred to the Representatives' Council. Finally, the Cabinet was briefed on the participation of Bahrain in Dubai 2017 Airshow Exhibition. The outcomes of the participation in the International Travel Trade Show recently held in London and the participation in the World Youth Forum in Egypt. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, ordered the swift repair of houses damaged in the recent terrorist attack on an oil pipeline site in Bury. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince directed the Minister of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning to oversee the identification of structural damage and repair work. His Royal Highness also directed the Governor of the Northern Government to provide follow-up assistance to affected families and property owners. Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, today inaugurated the Second World Businesswomen Forum and the B2B exhibition under the theme Women in the Engineering Field, organised by Bahrain Businesswomen Society. Her Royal Highness hailed the Society's holding of the forum, which witnessed a remarkable international presence, noting the importance of the forum's focus on Bahraini Women's Day. 
She underscored the importance of highlighting the Kingdom's experience in female economic empowerment, noting that the Bahraini example of women's empowerment holds a pioneering international status. After the forum's opening session, Her Royal Highness inaugurated the accompanying exhibition where she reviewed businesswomen's participation both inside and outside the Kingdom. I would like first to uh, express my uh, uh, sincere thanks to Her Royal Highness uh, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, wife of His Majesty the King and the President of Supreme Council for Women for her patronage for the second international business woman ex uh, forum and exhibition. Uh, of course, this year we took the theme of women in engineering and uh, uh, the engineering woman who uh, in the world of business and of course the forum will be uh, and of course this is uh, uh, following the the selection of her royal highness to be the theme of the year to celebrate bahraini women this year and of course our forum will be uh, uh, conducted uh, will be having five sessions five different sessions um, two of them will be specialized in engineering and the, th the other three will be enhancing uh, uh, the business woman and the business world and we'll be talking about different initiatives from um, uh, incubators to accelerators and we will be having uh, some uh, uh, 
illuminations on uh, women leaders in the world of business. So which will all have its own impact on inspiring young entrepreneurs who we are we have here participants and the business women in general who are participating to take their steps to the next level and we do have also the a special session which is uh, devoted, de devoted for only the students in Bahrain who are studying engineering uh, whether they are both genders uh, which we called which, which we called it uh, from engineering to entrepreneurship so there will be some success stories from uh, young engineers who converted their profession into the business world. So hopefully we will be we will be coming we will come out with good results from this uh, forum in this coming three days. I do represent uh, a Russian uh, social organization which is called Union of Women's Forces. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, business women inside the organization and we are trying to communicate uh, with practically all existing Russian women's organizations. So we think that uh, women in business, they can um, be very effective. They can strengthen the world as a whole, they can strengthen the economic situation and according to our analysis, I mean the analysis of uh, the Union of Women's Forces of Russia. As soon as women go into the economic procedure, the results uh, grow up very quickly. So I think that it is really very important for all the states uh, in, through over the world to get women uh, as part of business structure. Because as soon as a woman enters uh, a world of men, a, a world of business because it is still a world of men uh, so the situation inside the economy starts to be more socialized so it is very important for all the countries I suppose. We are honored and pleased today to participate in the second exhibition for business women uh, society uh, well it was amazing experience we are so lucky to, to be here and to uh, to see the the princess His Majesty the King's personal representative for charity work and youth affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, opened late yesterday at the Khalifa Sports City Brave International Combat Week and the fourth World Championships Amateur Mixed Martial Arts and the ninth edition of Brave. Presents were first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, honorary chairman of the Bahrain Mixed Martial Arts Federation, that's the BMMAF, chairman of the High Organizing Committee of the Brave International Combat Week, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chairman of the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation, Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Issa Al Khalifa, I MMAF President Mr. Kareth Brown and the Minister of Sports and Youth Affairs Hisham Al Jauda, in addition to a number of MPs and senior officials from the sport and youth sectors. The event is organized by Bahrain's IMMAF in collaboration with His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Media Bureau and the KHKMMA organization supervised by IMMAF. 51 teams from countries across the globe are currently taking part in the competitions. His Highness Sheikh Nasser welcomed the participating teams in Brave International Combat Week that kicked off yesterday and will continue until the 19th of November. His Highness Sheikh Nasser said that Bahrain has earned the trust of the international federations and various games to host championships as a result of the Kingdom's qualified youth cadres and their efficiency in organizing world events. His Highness Sheikh Nasser also noted that the fourth World Championships Amateur Mixed Martial Arts will further promote Bahrain's capabilities for hosting world events. Sheikh Nasser also said that the opening ceremony of the competition was outstanding, reflecting the success of the competitions. Sheikh Nasser praised the efforts exerted by His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad in spreading sports and his keenness on the participation of Bahrain's team in all the different competitions to earn experience and set the kingdom on the world map of this game. 
His Highness Sheikh Nasser also lauded the efforts of the IMMAF President, Mr. Kareth Brown, in giving federations the opportunity to organize such events. For his part, Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid affirmed the importance of hosting such sports events in the kingdom, providing a real opportunity to spread the game amongst the youth, in addition to enhancing Bahrain's status as a sports centre for mixed martial arts in the Middle East. Sheikh Khalid praised the support of His Highness Sheikh Nasser for this competition, highlighting His Highness's keenness on developing the Bahraini sports sector in general and mixed martial arts in particular. Khalifa Sports City opens its doors for the opening ceremony and competitions that were long awaited. The 2017 Brave International Combat Week kicks off with the participation of over 50 countries, which includes a large female participation. Hundreds of MMA fighters prepare to go head-to-head -head throughout the week. Well, it's just wonderful to be here and we're very excited about all of the things that are happening. Uh, I greeted the team in the USA uh, several years ago, watched everything grow, and we're delighted that the Prince has gotten involved and we all see the future of where the sport is going. We've made massive, massive, great growth steps, and to be here is a wonderful opportunity for the sport. And uh, it's awesome to be at uh, IMF World Championships in Bahrain, and uh, it's a fantastic venue, everything looks beautiful, and uh, yeah, let's, let's get the, the tournament on the go. Well done, congratulations. 
The Brave International Combat Week consists of two competitions, Brave 9, the Kingdom of Champions, and IMMAF, World Championship for Amateur MMA. The event resembles a historic week for Bahrain, filled with excitement, entertainment, and performances. So I feel proud that, uh, that uh, an Arab country is uh, hosting the World IMF Championship for the first time, taking it from Vegas, and this is, uh, and especially hosting this uh, with that beauty and that professionalism. Uh, when we had the board meeting, I, w I, told, the, I told all the board directors that uh, you're going to be surprised with the, what Bahrain can, can offer and can, uh, can get you guys. And uh, I was right. So uh, we want to thank all the Bahraini team who, who did that and uh, all the effort they put to do such a success and a historical event. First of all, I would like to thank His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad for being uh, the patron of this tournament. And of course, a big, big thank you going out to His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad, who made MMA the number one game in the kingdom and supporting all the athletes, clubs in Bahrain, and of course, founding the KHK team, which had a great record in the European World Championship, African Championship, Asian Championship. And now the championship is back here in the Kingdom of Bahrain. We've got more than 51 countries participating. We've got more than 200 athletes, more than 100 coaches and officials coming to this kingdom. Uh, Bahrain is setting records, and we're setting a new benchmark for tournaments like MMA, moving from the States to Bahrain, so our benchmark is very high. The championship highlights and reflects the kingdom's position in supporting and hosting global sporting events, breaking all records in terms of size of participation. For the first time in the nation, the championship strengthens the position of the kingdom in international sports map. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, deputised the Southern Governor, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, to attend the 12th graduation ceremony of Ahliya University. The Southern Governor extended the congratulations of His Royal Highness the Premier to the graduates and his wishes of further progress and success. Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali affirmed that the government, under the leadership of the Prime Minister, has prioritised education based on its belief of its importance in building the foundations of sustainable development. He praised the level of public and private education in the Kingdom, noting the contribution of private educational institutions in developing education and preparing distinguished generations of qualified graduates. He affirmed that Ahliya University has become an excellent model in keeping up with the latest developments through partnerships with the world's leading universities. The Southern Governor praised the efforts of the founding president of Ahliya University and chairman of the Board of Trustees, Professor Abdullah Al Hawaj, as well as the university's administrative and academic staff, wishing them further progress and success. The ceremony commenced with the speech of the university's president, where he praised the patronage of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister. Al Hawaj added that the support of the government enabled Ahliya University to make outstanding achievements, including ranking first place in the QS 2018 World University Ranking in the category of the most advanced and progressive Arab universities. Ahliya also ranked 35 among over 1,000 Arab universities. He extended the appreciation of the university's cadres, graduated and affiliates to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his patronage. He noted the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Premier, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Education and Training Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa and the Minister of Education and Chairman of the Higher Education Council Dr Majid bin Ali Al Nuemi. The University's President Professor Mansour Al Halli hailed the supports of the Premier. Graduate Nur Al Huda Al Jalas delivered a speech on behalf of the 12th batch of graduates expressing thanks and appreciation to parents and to Ahliya University for their continuous support. 
The ceremony included a song dedicated to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister from the university and its students. The graduates expressed thanks to the university and their parents for the support they have received. A number of ministers, senior officials, members of the political and diplomatic corps and a number of Shura and Representatives Council's members. Organised by the Bahrain Centre for Strategic, International and Energy Studies, that's DERASAD, the sixth meeting of the Interagency and Expert Group on the Sustainable Development Goal Indicators took place at the Diplomat Hotel. Different representatives of countries and agencies were there to share their findings on the goals of the agenda. More now in this report from Sara al -Burek. The sixth meeting of the Interagency and Expert Group on Sustainable Development Goal Indicators, also known as the IAEG SDG, is being held in the Kingdom of Bahrain this week and is hosted by the Bahrain Center for Strategic International and Energy Studies, Dirasat, and their strategic sponsor, Temkin. As a research center, we found that uh, statistics is a very, uh, it's quite a fundamental thing for us and for any nation actually. We need to use statistics to understand things, to compare things, to know where we are, and so on. So statistics is very essential, and uh, the Kingdom of Bahrain had uh, done a magnificent job in this aspect, uh, and we like to share it with the rest of the world. Um, and this event is, is, is evident on on what we can do. Top issues on the agenda are reviewing the tier classification as well as discussing the proposed guidelines on data flows and global data reporting, reviewing progress made on the methodological development of tier 3 indicators, and discussing issues related to the work stream on data disaggregation as well as discussing progress made on the data reporting calendar. The challenges we face as a statistical community or even broader uh, the data community, I would say, is to really fulfill the ambitions of the agenda. The agenda is a vast agenda and uh, is based on the principle that no one should be left behind. So to really fulfill that ambition, uh, you need data on a vast range of policy issues. You need data on all groups of the population and in some cases those are the groups that are the more vulnerable, the more difficult to reach. So the statistical community has a huge challenge in terms of defining the standards, the measurement tools, but also bringing the capacity to countries where resources are more limited or where statistical systems are less developed. But it's also a challenge for countries with or which already have a good data system, because this is in, in many cases there are new topics and there are new uh, ways you have to measure uh, issues, and including uh, reaching these uh, specific groups of the population that traditionally are excluded by by data collection methods this meeting will be following the same format as the five meetings before it with a member meeting taking place and a plenary session after that the IAEG SDG was established by the Statistical Commission at its 46th session to develop an indicator framework for the monitoring of goals and targets of the 2030 agenda for sustainable development at the global level and to support its implementation we have a mandate from the political um, bodies of the United Nations to develop a framework so that uh, all countries uh, can follow up the development agenda uh, that was agreed by the General Assembly. And uh, the specifically, we, we have to be able to produce a set of uh, guideline, guidelines for the exchange of data we have to produce guidelines for data disaggregation so that we should be able to identify as best as possible all uh, population groups. Uh, you have to remember that one of the mottos of the 2030 agenda is leaving not one behind. So that means 
in statistical terms that we have to produce data so that everyone is visible for policy making. So the data fits into policy making and that, that's why the work of this group is important. This is Sarah Brake reporting for Bahrain International. Customs Affairs conducts its operations across the country's ports by applying security and customs procedures that guarantee homeland safety and provides necessary facilities. More now on its role in this report. The Customs Affairs plays an essential role in supporting the national economy and protecting port security. Customs Affairs has made large strides in developing its services and modernizing its procedures thanks to efficient collaborative work. Entrance and exit procedures are applied to facilitate the traffic flow by granting access to all lanes, especially during peak times, in regards to procedures taken to protect the port. The custom staff have a security sense and we have assisting equipment such as X-ray for travelers and luggage in addition to K-9, which can detect illegal substances, drugs and explosives. What we care about the most is the comfort of the traveler and maintaining security and safety. This begins with the Bahrain Airport Company to Bahrain Airport Services and then to the Customs Hall in which we inspect the travelers and their luggage. And there are some cases of violations that we deal with. In terms of lanes, there are two. One is red and the other is green, which facilitates the traveler's movement flow throughout the airport. The customs staff are committed to their duties to facilitate travel movement and cargo transfers in line with standard regulations which support Bahrain's role as a hub that attracts trade and investment projects. Previously, there was an overlap between customs and relevant authorities. The new re-engineering has separated these steps. The first handles clearance with relevant authorities and moving to the second step which is custom services, which takes from several minutes to less than an hour. This procedure contributed to facilitating custom monitoring, and the new custom engineering is considered an excellent leap in our work that has been praised. In regards to receiving travelers, we have a fully occupied hall, such as X-ray scanner, with fixed employees, and in case of ship's arrival, we impose the customs procedures. The Customs Affairs is keen to keep up with international updates in terms of security and customs. It gives great care to uplift the capabilities of its affiliates based on its belief that investment in human resources is the greatest contribution to work efficiency and development. It seeks to provide advanced equipment to its customs ports to keep the Customs Affairs in the forefront of national institutions that keeps up with national modernization and prosperity.